For all its success after World War II, the Convair B-36 Peacemaker strategic bomber was still a piston-engine machine, and it would not take long for it to be displaced by jet power. However, as the 1950s began, the company conceived an idea to extend the career of its beloved bomber. They would create a jet propulsion version that could enter the atomic era. The new design requirements would take it far from its original concept, giving birth to an entirely different aircraft with sleek, swept-back wings. The Convair YB-60 would eventually be developed in parallel with the legendary Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, Fortress, and they even shared the same engine model. Equipped with an unrivaled payload capacity, the YB-60 was on its way to becoming the United States' most competent atomic delivery platform. Times change. As the arms race progressed, formerly capable piston aircraft made way for the jet era. The Convair B-36 Peacemaker operated with the U.S. Air Force from 1949 to 1959. With the longest wingspan of any combat aircraft in the world, the B-36 became the first bomber in U.S. history capable of delivering nuclear weapons without the need for modifications, taking on that role until it was replaced by the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. Following the success of the Peacemaker, Convair conceptualized a variant more suitable for the times ahead, and in late August of 1950, the company issued a formal proposal for an all-jet version. The Air Force was enticed, and on March 15th the following year, they authorized Convair to use two B-36Fs and convert them into what was to be the B-36G. However, as the design became more refined and the changes increasingly radical, the Air Force redesignated the model in 1951 and created an entirely new bomber, the YB-60. Not long after, the designers encountered several significant problems. It was not that simple to determine the final configuration for the planned operational version. So in August of 1951, the company proposed to build two prototypes with different configurations, which would allow the refinement of the definitive one. The Air Force accepted the proposition, but the contractor had to absorb any additional costs. New Design The first draft of the YB-60 envisioned an aircraft with similar measures to the YB-36G, including a height of 50.4 feet, a wingspan of 206.4 feet, and a wing area of 5,239 square feet. Its length, on the other hand, was increased by 2.5 feet, reaching 171.2. Furthermore, the new model was to retain its original eight Pratt & Whitney YJ-57 P3 turbojet engines and ratings. Similarly, its complement, fuel load, bomb load, defensive armament, and systems were the same as specified for the original project. The YB-60 shared about 70% of its forebears' genetics. For the most part, both fuselages were identical, except the new bomber was equipped with a removable nose section to house the radar and bombing systems, as the installation of the B-36 was deemed unreliable. Still, the aircraft was fitted with a more streamlined nose with an instrumented boom for flight testing. The main difference between the earlier YB-36G and the first prototype of the YB-60 ended up being the wing appanage. The new aircraft showcased elegant swept-back wings and carried its eight engines in four twin pods, two beneath each wing. Notably, the wings employed many B-36 parts. Moreover, the YB-60 was stripped of the B-36's armament, and all the previous model's defensive gun turrets were removed, except for the twin M24A1 20mm cannons at the tail. The turret was controlled remotely, had 400 rounds, and was directed by an AN-APG-32 fire control radar. In addition, the planned extended tail section would enable the YB-60 to remain horizontal for longer periods during takeoff. Rivalry The YB-60's main competition for the Air Force contract was the legendary Boeing B-52 Strato Fortress. Convair's proposal was substantially cheaper than its competitors, and it involved modifying an existing design instead of an entirely new machine. Nevertheless, the intended power plant for the prototype was being developed for the Strato Fortress, but Convair was still allowed to use the J57 P3 turbojet twin-engine pod and nacelles developed by Boeing. In fact, the J57 came from an attempt to overcome high fuel consumption in early jet engines, and more importantly, the short range it caused. The objective was to obtain both an acceptable range and the benefits of jet propulsion, with a focus on speed. Also, the power plant could be switched when a suitable option became available, but that would imply sacrificing speed. 
The engine was developed in parallel with the YB-52, and by early 1951, all engines available for bench tests had accrued 550 hours of running. Finally, the J-57 went into production just in time for both rivals to carry on with their maiden flights by mid-1952. That is, if the aircraft were ready. Needless to say, the brand new engines were not abundant at the time, but the eighth unit required for the YB-60's first flight was delivered in early April of 1952, just in time for the trial. The first prototype then took flight on April 18th and was piloted by Beryl A. Erickson for 66 minutes under inclement weather conditions. The YB-52 had beaten the YB-60 into the air by three days, and to make matters worse, it was also about 100 miles slower than the Boeing. On top of that, the Convair model showed significant handling problems, but it did have a heavier bomb load of 72,000 pounds against the B-52's 43,000. The YB-60 was to carry box fin bombs from World War II, as well as interim conical fin bombs. Plus, its role would include transporting atomic weapons, namely the Mark VI aerial bomb, an improved variant of the infamous Fat Man dropped on Nagasaki at the end of the war. The weapon weighed 8,500 pounds and was 10 feet 7 inches long and 60 inches in diameter, while its explosive range of 1 kiloton equaled 1,000 tons of TNT. Many variations were introduced throughout the first half of the decade, and several delivery platforms would carry the Mark VI, including the B-29, B-36, B-47, B-50, and B-52. Had the B-60 entered production, the weapon would have been its standard atomic cargo. Unfortunately, however, the Air Force was not interested in the prototype's extra capacity after weighing all the other drawbacks. Second Chance Before the program was formally cancelled, Convair disclosed a new design iteration for a second prototype. This version emphasized defensive armament, but overall performance was not increased. What's more, in many areas it was actually worse, extending the gap between the YB-60 and the aircraft that would soon take it out of the competition. A final design iteration in the summer of 1952 had the new prototype retaining the same measurements except for length, which was further extended to 175.2 feet. Prototype number two also kept the eight J-57 turbojet engines with their ratings. Still, there were a few major changes. First, the defensive armament was enhanced to 10 M24A1 20mm cannons packed in five remotely controlled turrets. Combined, the guns had an ammunition load of 3,600 rounds. And in addition to the tail turret, there were two located in the upper forward section and two more in the lower aft. Plus, the complement was almost doubled. While the first prototype housed a crew of five in a single pressurized compartment, the new version would carry nine passengers in two separate cabins. The forward cockpit would accommodate the pilot and co-pilot, as well as the bombardier radar operator, navigator gunner, and the forward gunner, while the radio ECM operator, tail gunner APG-41 operator, and the two under-fuselage turret gunners traveled at the aft. As the additional weight diminished the aircraft's performance, including top speed, combat speed, and combat radius, the many missions the manufacturer had planned suddenly dissolved. Also, there had never been an official competition to replace the B-36 bomber, but the Convair YB-60 still lost to the Boeing B-52. Both aircraft were never closely compared, but the B-52 always seemed like the preferred choice for the future of the Air Force. The YB-60 prototype only flew two more times after its debut. Despite being somewhat more successful than the first flight, mixed results clearly showed that the Convair model was inferior to Boeing's. Moreover, several problems like buffeting, fluttering, engine surging, and electrical issues buried the Enterprise, and in August of 1952, the project was cancelled. That same month, the Air Force announced that it wouldn't procure more B-36 bombers, besides those currently in production, while a contract for 70 B-52 bombers was extended. The renowned Convair B-36 Peacemaker was the largest mass-production piston aircraft ever built, but the Stratofortresses were regarded as the future airborne delivery platform for strategic command. In the end, one thing seemed clear in the early 1950s. Larger and slower aircraft were more vulnerable than smaller, faster ones. The YB-60's second prototype was never finished, and most of its equipment was never fitted. Nevertheless, having completed their contract satisfactorily, both prototypes were formally accepted by the Air Force in 1954, but they never flew again. Convair would eventually try to interest the Air Force to operate at least one of the aircraft as a testbed for innovative technologies, 
but the required funds were not allocated, officially ending the organization's association with the Fort Worth company after having reached $14.3 million in development alone. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels for more historical adventures from the skies, seas, and land. Stay tuned.